All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. And to each of you who are on the conference call line on today, we bless the Lord for your presence. As we come together once more and again to have prayer and to ask God's continued blessings upon each of us. The summit says in the 57th numbers of Psalms, this is what the summit says, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me because my soul trusted in thee. Yes, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. We pray that everyone is doing well and that you are safe on today and that you are enjoying this day for Thursday, May the 11th, 2023. All right, at this time, Dr. McCoy, she is going to come at this time and give us the names of those on the sick list, the prayer list, those who are requesting special prayer uh, this afternoon. Deacon McCoy, thank you so much. If you are available, uh, we turn it over to you. Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Tobias, members, visitors, and everyone on the prayer line. Our special prayer request for Thursday, May the 11th, 2023, reads as follows. Brother Robert McNair, Brother Michael Berry, Sister Kayala Berry Miles and family, and Sister Tabitha Berry. Brother Anthony Smith, who recently had brain surgery, he resides in California. Dr. Dolores Wright, Sister Victoria Lynn, Sister Betty Palmer, Sister Ella Buford, Brother Glenn McNeil, Sister Betty Mitchell, Sister Tony Faye Mitchell, Sister Sonja Cooper, Reverend Erwin Todd, the brother of Deacon James Todd, he is in the Bluff Rehabilitation Center in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Sister Rosalina Deloach, the daughter-in-law of Sister Rosa Todd, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer and receiving chemotherapy. She resides in Phoenix, Arizona. Sister Georgia Bassett, she's resting at home. Minister Rachel Mitchell, she is in the hospice home care. Sister Maya Thompson, the daughter of Sister Nadine Barnes, Brother R.T. Clerk and family, Brother Larry Stevenson, the brother of Deborah Stevenson, Sister Deborah Stevenson, he is in the Yazoo Rehabilitation Center. Sister Annie McClowing, the sister of Sister Stevenson, Sister Demetrius Powell, the daughter of Sister Christine Jackson, Sister Ruthie Davis, the mother of Dr. Hamithia Thompson, Sister Hamithia Thompson, Sister Travis, Sister Laverne Chen, Reverend Matthew Blackwell, Sister Carolyn Miller, Missionary Dr. Bobby Parker and her two daughters, Sister Brianna Parker and Sister Desiree Day as they battle cancer, Reverend Durr, Reverend Gerald Mance and Sister Robin Mance during their time of illness, Sister uh, Jacqueline Hargrave and Sister Teresa Hargrave they are the sister-in-laws of Sister Carolyn Clement. Sister Teresa Hargrave resides in Natchez, Mississippi. Brother Kevin McKnight Sr., he's resting at home. He's the nephew of Sister Carolyn Clement. Sister Annie Wilson and Sister Bertha Williams, they are the sisters of Deacon Bernie of Clement. Sister Williams resides in Dallas, Texas. Mother Emma Owens, the aunt of Deacon Clement, she resides in Detroit, Michigan. Sister Linda Sutterway, Sister Jeannie White, Sister Yalitha Stokes and her son, Brother Jakari Stokes. Councilman Kenneth Stokes and family in the passing of his wife, Hines County Court Judge and City Councilwoman, the late Sister Loretta Cooper Stokes. Sister Pearlene Griffin and family in the passing of her brother, Brother Willie Griffin. Sister Joan Thomas, and Brother Bernard Thompson, he resides in Fort Worth, Texas. The 16th number of Psalms, verse 1, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. This concludes our special prayer request for this Thursday, May the 11th, 2023. Amen, amen. Thank you, Dr. McCoy. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that information. Uh, with us, with the body of Christ this afternoon. Uh, we're going to ask Dr. McCoy, she will come back following our midday prayer period, and she'll share 
uh, whatever information she deems necessary as it relates to our Women's Day, uh, Mother's Day, rather, our Mother's Day celebration this coming Sunday. Uh, because this coming Sunday is the second Sunday in May. We look forward to seeing you in the house of the Lord uh, this coming Sunday as we worship the Lord and celebrate Mother's Day. So we want to invite all of our members, visitors, and friends, if practical, to come and worship the Lord with us and celebrate Mother's Day with us this coming Sunday. Uh, Bible class, again, will continue uh, Monday, May 15th. Uh, we will cover the last two or three uh, verses in Exodus chapter 10. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you will go ahead and get started reading chapter 11. Uh, we're going to get started with chapter 11. If the Lord says the same in Exodus this coming Monday, if it's the Lord's will. Uh, our devotional thought on today. Uh, comes out of the 37th numbers of Psalms, three verses I want to look at, verse 6, 7, and 8 of the 37th numbers of Psalms. Uh, and it deals with our responsibility to rest, our responsibility to rest. Let me read to you what verse 6 through verse 8, 8 in that 37th numbers of Psalms says. It says, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness, as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Then he wraps up in verse number 8 by saying, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any Wise to do evil. Our responsibility to rest. Verse 7 says to rest in the Lord. What does that mean? Now, Psalm 37, in my opinion, it reveals what we must do to receive our heart's desire. Because if you go back and read uh, the first five or six verses in that 37 numbers, uh, you'll see that it talks about or kind of discusses uh, what we must do in order to receive our heart's desire. But if we keep reading this particular section, we find the psalmist here encourages us to rest in the Lord and to wait patiently for the Lord to act. Now, the truth of the matter is rest sounds easy, but if you really think about it, sometimes it may require supernatural strength, and, and because our natural tendency is to scramble. That's what we do on a regular basis. We scramble, we fret, we push our agenda, and those habits literally turn our mind away from delight and trusting in the Lord. And the truth of the matter is, I believe this, the stronger our desire is, the shorter our fuse is. Let me say that again this afternoon. The stronger our desire is, sometimes the shorter our fuse is, because sometimes we may even try to give God a timetable. Timetable, Lord have mercy. Many of us, that's what we do. We try to give God a timetable, but true rest occurs only in God's or on His schedule. Wow. Only God understands every circumstance, and the truth of the matter is he knows the precise moment when answering our prayer is best. So so, so the basic thing we must remember, the basics of Psalm 37, uh, I believe they are interrelated. We must spend time enjoying God in order to learn to trust him and to commit our ways to him. Let me say that again. We must spend time enjoying God in order to learn to trust him and to commit to his ways. And doing so, doing this, I believe that frees us to rest in his control and patiently wait for the Lord to move or to act on our behalf. So in conclusion this afternoon, many times I believe when we pray, I, I believe that it's important for us to take a moment to thank God for giving us the desires of our heart, but we should also ask him to help us to delight more in him, to commit everything to him, 
And, and I believe we need to possess the ability to rest in the knowledge that God has everything under control. And that will cause us to wait for his perfect timing. Because we do know that the timing of God is absolutely perfect. So as we rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him, we do that knowing that God is going to respond at the most appropriate time. Thank you all so much. That's our devotional thought on today. Our responsibility is to rest in the Lord. We have three individuals who are going to bless us, uh, three brothers who are going to bless us. They're going to pray with and for the body of Christ on today. Thank you, brother, so very much. We have Brother Wilbert McCoy. He's going to get us started. We have Deacon Vernon L. Sanders, and we have Deacon James Todd. Again, thank you, brother. Thank you, Deacon, so very much for leading us in prayer on today. Uh, brother Wilbert McCoy, if you're on the line, we're going to uh, pause at this moment, turn it over to you so that you can uh, lead us in prayer this afternoon. Brother McCoy, are you available? Uh, yes, I'm here, uh, Pastor uh, Tobias. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, I want to say thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you do. Because without you, it couldn't happen. We all want to put our trust in the Lord. Because we know without the Lord, nothing cannot happen. We ask the Lord to look at our ailing, our sick, uh, people that's in pain, or uh, people that's uh, a disease. Lord, we just know that the Lord can 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 come and heal these people, and we ask that the Lord just send His Spirit out to these people in His time and His will. And as we look upon this earth that we are on, we want to thank God for this creation. His creation, if we look out the window right now, we can see the trees, we can see the earth, we can see the magnificent of what talent God has gave man to make his life easier as he serves him. So, Lord, as this day, as we go through this day, we ask that you just give us guidance, give us strength, give us sight, give us all of what you want us to do. May it be the Ten Commandments, the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, we just ask that you just let us enter into our body and let us serve you as we know that we want to serve you. We ask all of this, Lord, from the time we get up to the time we go to bed. Because last night, when we went to bed, we didn't know that we were going to wake up this morning. But, Lord, we knew, we knew that you cover us. You, we knew that you're going to protect us because you said you do. So, Lord, as we are awake this morning, we want to acknowledge you. We want to give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Wilbur McCall. Bless the Lord for your faithfulness and leading us in prayer this afternoon. Deacon Vernell Sanders, uh, we submit to you at this moment if you're on the line. Deacon Sanders, are you available? Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Bass. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to uh, any of my Zion family, friends, and visitors. Let us pray. We are the life and length of our days, God. You are a provider, healer, and defender. Every need we lift up to you in heaven, you are already well. The state of our hearts is always known by you. Who knows us completely. You see our pain and our confusion, and you know our frustrations and our struggle to love the other people in our lives. Father, you see it all. You know it all. And thank you for being in all of us, in it with all of us. Thank you for listening to our prayers, and thank you for answering them. You are faithful, compassionate, and caring about our concerns. We are thankful you are a personal God. Today we pray, Holy Spirit, for you to come into our lives and fill our hearts to the brim with everything we need to live this day to the fullest, as Jesus died for. 
help us to understand what we need, and let the rest go as we trust you, God, with our lives. Help us to heal from pain, even though answers to our prayers haven't happened the way that we want them in the time we want them to. Increase our trust in you, you are, and help us to trust in the power of prayer. This day, we surrender afresh to you. Jesus, our arms are open and our hearts are fully devoted to you. Help us to follow you each day, discerning what to do and where to go. Help us to live in the moment, praying continually and trusting our lead on our lives. Jesus, we know we can always look to you when we feel isolated, hurt, betrayed, and sad. You know how we feel. Thank you for walking with us, for setting our Holy Spirit in us to guide and comfort us as we trust in the power of prayer. Perhaps comfort is what we need the most. Comfort and courage us, God, as only you can. Father, we want to know with the same confidence Paul had the powerful effect of our prayers and of those who intercede for us. Help us to reach out in confidence when we need prayer. And help us to pay attention to the people in our lives who also need our prayer. We want to feel the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit rushing through our lives as we remain in constant conversation with you, Father. Thank you faithfully for meeting us where we are in our lives before we even call on you. The most dependable, reliable, faithful Father. We give you our whole hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you as well, Deacon Sanders, for your faithfulness. Thank you. And Brother McCoy so very much. All right, Deacon James Todd, he's the third individual who's going to bless us this afternoon. Thank you, Deacon Todd, for making yourself available. We turn it over to you at this moment. Deacon Todd, are you available? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Our Father in heaven, we come again with thank you in our hearts. We thank you, ma'am, for bringing us all across the day up until this present time. We ask you to forgive us for our sins and keep your love and arm protection around us. And keep us in hurt, harm, and danger. We ask you to hold us in your hand and keep us in your care. Now, that you go with those that are sick. Go with those that are bereaved. Now, to hold them in your hand. And that's able us to go in and share with them, reminding us that you said we're the light of the world. Able to let our light shine that others might see you through us. Bless us and keep us in your care. Hold us in your hand. Lead, guide, and direct our feet. And that path of righteousness. Now, we ask you to bless this midday prayer service today. Now, to able us to take your word and deliver it to others and live thereby. Bless us and keep us in your care. Bless our pastor. Bless our church family. Bless all of those that are on the line this evening. In your son Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you as well, Deacon Todd. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we continue in prayer on today, God, our Father, we know that you are the healer. God, we know that you are the healer of our souls, our spiritual souls, and you are the healer of our physical bodies. God, we realize and recognize that your word tells us it is you who put up and it is you that is able to uh, put down, pull up, and raise up. It is you who chastise. And it is you, God, who heals all manner of sickness. So, God, in your name on today, because of your mercy and compassion, God, I pray, we pray on today, that you would visit all of those names that were called on the sick and prayer list. I pray, God, that you would visit our brothers and our sisters, those names who were called. God, I pray that you would even stretch forth your hand, even right now, because your hand, uh, it's full of healing and health. And I pray, God, that you will uh, raise up those individuals who are sick in the hospital, those who are uh, at home not feeling the best. 
I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would cure and heal those individuals from their various illnesses. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would continue to put away from them the spirit of disease, cancer, uh, diabetes, those who may be suffering from heart problems, heart trouble, mental uh, issues, God. Nothing is too hard for you. Fever has so many people bound, God. And, and more importantly, God, we pray that you will heal individuals who are sin sick. Heal them from their sins and their transgressions. God, I pray that you would grant to them the forgiveness that you promised to extend to us if we come before you boldly, confessing our faults and confessing our sins. Because it is in you, God, because of your love. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless all of us who are on this prayer line today. Thank you for the word that was uh, shared with your people on today, God, reminding us how we need to rest in you. That's our responsibility, God. We we trust you, and we know that you have our best interest. At heart, God, we know that your timetable is a perfect timetable, and because of that, we should have the confidence to rest in you, knowing that you will indeed grant us the desires of our heart. God, I pray and I lift up each individual from the letter A to Z who's on the midday prayer call on today. Thank you for them uh, taking time out of their schedule uh, because they see the importance of the relevance of prayer. God, I pray that you would meet their every need, whatever need they may be in need of. God, I pray that you would meet that need the way you see fit, God. I pray that you will keep us safe. Uh, So much crime is going on in the city of Jackson, accidents, crime. It seems to be all around us, God, but we know that you can put a fence of protection around all of us. So, God, I pray for the safety of all of our members. I pray for uh, the safety of all of our uh, visitors who take the time to participate on on midday Thursdays and and Monday night Bible class, even our Sunday school. Oh, God, I pray for all of our members that you will keep us in your care Uh, because for the only only way we can do your will, God, and do your work is that we have to uh, have healthy bodies in order to spread the good news, tell others about you, and go to and fro. So, God, I pray that you'll keep us healthy so that we can share with others how awesome you are. Thank you for our church family, God. I pray that you will continue to allow your light to shine upon us in your uh, your, uh, 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 your place of worship, our church facility, God. Allow your light to be manifested before men. We thank you for the addition of our church that, that we experienced on last Sunday, God, and we know this is not the end, but it's only the beginning. And we thank you for those members that we see coming down the road and in the near future, God. I pray for them as well. But more importantly, God, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who makes it all possible. And as we prepare, Father God, to celebrate Mother's Day this coming uh, Sunday, God, I pray that you'll bless all of the mothers who are seeking to influence and impact their families, their children. Bless them. Thank you for them. Give them a stronger to des- a desire to live for you and to work for you and to be a living examples, testimony of what you expect from mothers. And then, God, there are so many who are uh, 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 not looking forward to this time of the year because it brings up memories of mothers who have transitioned and going on. I pray for them as well, that you allow those memories to be fruitful in their minds and allow them to realize and recognize that even though they may have transitioned on, uh, their memory and their love still lives among us. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being our God. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Listen, before you hang up on today, uh, Deacon McCoy is going to come uh, real quick again, and she's going to share some pertinent information as it relates to our Mother's uh, Day celebration this coming Sunday. Deacon McCoy, are you still available? Yes, sir, Dr. Tobias, and everyone that's on the prayer line today, we know that Mother's Day will be this coming Sunday, May the 14th, 
during the 11 a.m. worship service, and we look forward to a glorious time in the name of the Lord. And our theme is the powerful influence of a spiritual mother. The scripture was taken from Proverbs, the 31st chapter, verse 30. Now, our colors for this occasion are red, white, and pink. Now, ladies, we are asking that you wear any of the colors or any combination of these colors. The men are asked to wear red or pink ties. And we, the committee, we just so graciously thank Dr. Tobias and all the men of New Mount Zion for carrying out this service in honor of all mothers. And again, we thank you and we look forward to seeing you uh, this coming Sunday. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm excited and I hope and pray that you are excited as well. We anticipate having a glorious time in the Lord this coming Sunday. Listen, don't just hear about it. We want you to participate and be there and witness what the Lord is going to do and say this coming Sunday. Listen, call in, if you will, uh, Sunday at the 9 o'clock hour, participate in our Sunday school, and then we want to worship with you as well. Until Sunday morning, may the grace of God be with each of you, and I pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day, and I challenge each of you to be thankful on this Thursday. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Continue to be thankful to God for all of his many benefits and his blessings. Until Sunday morning, may the grace of God be with each of you and have a blessed, blessed rest of the day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Conference will automatically.